At this point, we've derived least squares and weighted least squares. And as, as I've said before, we've made some assumptions, some explicit, some explicit, some that I've actually told you about and some that I haven't told you about it. But a big one was that we are minimizing that vertical distance. Um, and it's not entirely arbitrary because typically when you are doing regression, you are measuring this parameter where you have presumably control and then you're trying to estimate this parameter. And so it's somewhat natural to say that the error is going to be that vertical distance in the thing that you are trying to estimate. But it was a choice and it's an arbitrary, somewhat arbitrary choice and there are other choices. So for example, let me just orient you again. Let's go back to the line with um, zero intercept, y equals mx. Um, I have a point x naught, y naught. I'm gonna compute the distance to be mx naught minus y naught. Obviously, I'm gonna take the square of that later on. So it's obviously, to, it's a reasonable question to ask is why vertical distance? Well, there's some good reason as I just enumerated, but it's also a good question to ask is, can we do something else? So could I, for example, have minimized the horizontal distance? I mean, that's also a pretty good measure of fit. And what would I have done here? I would have said, well, I'm gonna assume that there's some error in this dimension and not in the vertical dimension. Is that good? Is it bad? Is it right? Is it wrong? I don't know. It depends on the data. It's certainly a perfectly reasonable thing to do. And we could have done it by just swapping the xy coordinates and then running least squares or weighted least squares. So if we just take the x's and the y's and swap them, you're still fitting a line. Everything works equally well. That would have been perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with that. But that's still asymmetric. Yeah, I'm still saying that all the errors in one dimension, not in the other, or all the errors in one dimension and not in the other. Is there, for example, a symmetric error that just says what is the distance to the line? Forget about horizontal distance or vertical distance. And of course, I mean, conceptually, the answer is, of course there is. I can compute this distance right here. So let's let delta i be the shortest distance between the point and the line. Okay, so now let's think back what we did with least squares. We said, let's define something we wanna minimize, vertical distance. Let's write a quadratic error function, step two. Excellent, now let's minimize it, differentiate set equal to zero and solve. All right, so we've got to, let's see if we can turn the crank on this and see where it goes. There's no guarantee, it's a different error now. So let's start by asking the same thing we did with least squares and weighted least squares, let's define delta. It's no longer just the difference between the model evaluated at x and y, it's the shortest distance. Well, what is the shortest distance between a point and a line? Well, let me start by reparameterizing the line slightly differently. I'm gonna move away from the y equals mx slope intercept model and use this formulation that a line can be parameterized as ax plus by, where ab is the vector that is normal to the line, okay? And for now, we're gonna stick with lines going through the origin, just a single parameter. So, by the way, why is this true? Why is it that the vector AB um, is perpendicular to the line parameterized by AX plus BY equals zero? So think about this vector right here, um, AB that I've, I've drawn, and then think about any point along that line and the vector that's corresponding to that coming out of the origin. Yeah. So now I've got two vectors, one the AB vector and the other a vector pointing along a point on the line. And if I have two vectors that are perpendicular to each other, what do I know about them? That their dot product or their inner product is zero. What am I writing right here? AX plus BY is the dot product. A times the X coordinate, B plus B times the Y coordinate is the dot product between the vector associated with the point on the line, assuming it's unit length, of course, and uh, that vector right there that's perpendicular, and if it's equal to zero, well then, in fact, that point is perpendicular to AB. So that's just a little back of the envelope um, intuition as to why AX plus BY corresponds to a line where the vector AB is perpendicular to the line. And the reason I've done this, of course, is that it's gonna make it easier to define that little delta right there. All right, so now we have our new parameterization of the line, and let's now move forward with defining delta. I'm not going to derive this, but if you wanna take the exercise, it's actually a lovely exercise to estimate the shortest distance 
between a point and a line, and it is equal to if the point is x naught y naught and the line is parameterized by a b, the shortest distance to the line is a x naught plus b y naught absolute value because we're computing distance divided by uh, the magnitude of uh, the vector a b. So it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. I'm not going to derive it, but it's a, it's a, it's a pretty simple derivation if you're inclined to do it. Okay. Geez, um, I want to minimize the sum of all of those. That looks pretty messy to me. Why? Well, I've got ax plus by on top. I don't like the absolute value, but I'm going to assume I can throw those away and square that later on. But that divide by square root of a squared plus b squared is going to be problems. Why? Well, first of all, I'm squaring a and I'm squaring b. That's a nonlinearity, and I'm taking the square root of them. So that's going to cause me problems. But I don't actually need that denominator. I can assume that the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 1 because I don't care what the scale of that vector is. Remember that I said that that vector is perpendicular to the line. The magnitude of that vector, how long it is, is irrelevant to me. Make a b twice as long, it corresponds to exactly the same line, so I don't care. So if we assume that the square root of a squared plus b squared is equal to 1 in our parameterization of the line, well, then our distance is now ax naught plus by naught, which of course is just the dot product between the two points, by the way. Now, I still have a problem with that, um, that absolute value because I, that's a nonlinearity and I can't differentiate through absolute value. Um, ah, let me rewrite this in terms of the dot products. I just briefly mentioned that what I'm seeing here is a dot product. So if I have x naught, y naught here, and a, b here, this is just the dot product between the two, and you'll see in a minute why I've done it this way. I'm going to swap out that absolute value because it's going to be trouble when we go to differentiate with a square. So now what I'm minimizing is not, in fact, the, dis the, vertical, uh, the shortest distance, but the square of the shortest distance. And that was actually true with least squares and weighted least squares. I wasn't actually minimizing the vertical distance. I was uh, minimizing the square of the vertical distance. And I've done that, of course, because I know later on I'm eventually going to have to differentiate, and I can't differentiate through an absolute value because of the nonlinearity. OK, so now things are sort of looking up for us. Um, first of all, we now have the perpendicular distance written out in something that looks reasonably quadratic and seems to be linear in the unknowns. There's my unknown AB, and it's simply being multiplied through a dot product through a bunch of points. And so I feel pretty good about this, so let's see where this takes us next. So what do we have to do next now? So now we have our uh, objective of what we want to minimize. We have that delta, and now what we have to do is write out that quadratic error function, step two, and then we have to try to minimize that step three, and then of course we're going to implement it step four. And we'll do all that when we come back.